Welcome to Trudy Haynes Discovers Delaware, and today our guest for the whole show is a gentleman you can, I hope, find out so many things about how we're going to live in the future, what's going to happen to our state, and uh, answer a whole lot of questions. I'm talking about my guest, who is Senator Thomas Copper, and he is with us today, and we're going to talk to him in just a few seconds. So stay right there. First of all, we want to thank you for coming. Uh, this is a rare opportunity up close and personal to have you all to myself. Oh, <laughs> and, my wife and the audience too. <laughs> but uh, let's get a little background. How long have you been a senator? Uh, six years. This is uh, my uh, first term, and uh, the sixth, and sixth year of my first term. Uh -huh. So and you're up for re-election. I am. How do you feel? Confident? Uh, I, I always run scared. I, we were talking before the show, and I said this, I pointed this table beside us, and I said, this table could be running against me, and I would be out there campaigning morning, noon, and night you know, when we're not in session. This month, we're in recess and uh, for the most uh, month of August until right after Labor Day, and then we'll go back into, uh, into session through uh, the, uh, the beginning of October, break for the month of October, and have the elections, and, and then come back. Is that and, stressful? Uh, actually, I, this is my 12th statewide campaign, so I'm used to it. And, and I think for maybe for some, probably more for our families than it is for, mm. uh, for us. I'm married and my wife uh, was just retired from the DuPont company about a, a year ago after 28 years there. And my, our sons, we have two boys, 16 and 18. Our big boy just went off to college. That was stressful, saying goodbye <laughs> to him. And yes. uh, that was very hard to do. Yeah. So and fortunately, all our younger boy is still in high school. He's a junior here at Charter School of Wilmington. And our boys grew up in public schools and we're real proud of them both. Are you proud of the system? The public school system, oh yeah, I think it's a lot better uh, than it was when I took, uh, became governor in 1993. And we've worked hard to raise academic standards to make sure that, that we have, uh, we clearly spell out what we expect kids to know and be able to do in math and science and English and social studies. We raised the, uh, the uh, requirements for, for graduation, added some extra math and, and science courses. We, I think we've improved our teacher core. We have uh, just I don't know why I hear so many opposites. Uh, people are very disturbed about the no child left behind, they're di disturbed about the, the absence of good teachers, teachers getting appointed that aren't really qualified mm -hmm. and they're teaching other subjects that they are qualified for. What, I mean, how do you have such an optimistic view? I'm basically an, op an optimist about a lot of things. I, I think for the most part, the, the way the media reports uh, uh, improvements in public schools, they tend to focus more on the negative than on the positive. That's but if, true, yeah, but, yeah, but in if you this look case, at, maybe it, they should. Yeah, if you look at the performance of our kids in our schools for the last uh, 10 years or so, it's been steady improvement uh, across the board, uh, not just uh, uh, you know, Caucasian kids, but Hispanic kids, African-American kids, Asian-American kids, we've just been uh, very good. And we, uh, we continue to attract good teachers. I was in a school today down in in, uh, in uh, the southwestern part of Newcastle County, and we're just, I'm just so impressed with the, the teachers we saw there. Was last week down in uh, school districts north of, of Dover, and called Smyrna, and south of mm -hmm. Dover called Cesar Rodney, every school in Cesar Rodney School District is rated superior under No Child Left Behind. I mean, it's top of the charts. And the, uh, the so media, you really think this is a good program? Uh, it's, it's good and getting better, and we've got plenty of room for improvement, and we need to continue to, to improve, and, and, and we will. Now you're uh, Democrat. Mm -hmm, I am. Biden's Democrat. Yeah. And so both of you have a, a close relationship, I would assume. Well, I, I actually, uh, uh, here in Delaware, I think more so than a lot of states, Democrats and Republicans get along pretty well. Uh, we have our, you know, battles during election time, but when the elections are over, they're over. And we figure out how do we work together for, for the good of Delaware. For the good of Delaware. Yeah. That seems to be very important. It should yeah. be. Well, I have found that even better than in Pennsylvania, to tell you the truth. Oh, I, I'm sure it is. <laughs> yeah. I don't think you're disagree. Well, I, I watch the TV commercials that come out of Pennsylvania, out of the races there, and the TV commercials out of, say, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And I compare that with Delaware. It's like night and day. Yeah. And we're very civil, and uh, I think it's, just, it's, a, it's the right way to, 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 to run campaigns. Some of the things that you're concerned about, first of all, what committees are you serving? I serve on four committees. One is called uh, uh, Homeland Security and Government Affairs, and it gets me involved I'm in coming a, back to that. a lot of, uh, <laughs> lot of uh, issues. That, 
uh, of our day. Uh, I serve on a committee called Banking and, and Urban Affairs, which takes me into banking and finance issues and some insurance issues, housing issues, transportation issues uh, like SEPTA and you know, mass transit issues. I serve on a committee called Environment and Public Works, which gets me involved in clean air and clean water issues, which I'm... You're very, on all these committees. Yeah, and, and also in uh, highway issues, transportation issues. I, I serve on a committee called Aging. I tell people not I'm older. They put me on the Aging Committee. <laughs> and uh, so we focus a, a whole lot on, on issues that involve people like my mom and dad's uh, age if they were alive. Okay, now let's go back to number one, okay. home security. It's almost a failure, is it? Well, if, if you look at, uh, you know, since 9-11, we've not been successfully attacked in this country. And uh, you know, people can say it's, it's been a failure, but we've gone five years and we've uh, been able to to ward off uh, attacks by terrorists. So I don't know that that's been an, uh, an entire, I, I wouldn't call that a, a failure entirely. Uh, FEMA is part of uh, the mm -hmm. Department of, of Homeland Security. And uh, FEMA was, uh, gave a very disappointing performance a year ago with Katrina. We've made a lot of changes uh, as legislators in FEMA. FEMA's made a lot of changes. And one of the best changes they made is just putting people in charge of FEMA that actually know the business, that are involved, they have a history and an experience in, in uh, uh, managing our response to natural disasters. The problem we had before is the, uh, President Bush had, had appointed people like uh, the friends f famous, and yeah, friends and people <laughs> relatives. That, <laughs> they just hadn't done that for a living. You don't want to appoint people to those jobs. They have to be trained on the job. You want to have people there who know what they're doing so that when a Katrina comes ashore, they're ready to go. Of all of those committees, what have you done that pertains to Delaware that you feel has been an accomplishment of yours? Okay. It's interesting in, in the Senate, unlike the House, in the House you work within your committees. Mm -hmm. In the Senate you can work in the, the uh, jurisdiction of, of, of any committee. Mm -hmm. uh, among the, the things that I'm, I'd say, proudest of, uh, I, uh, my, my kids go to public schools here. Uh, we, uh, when I was governor, we introduced the competition in our public schools, public school choice. Uh, if you got school A here and school B here, parents could send their school for, for the kids from one school district to the other, one school to the other, if, if they're offering what they want in a different school. And one of the things I've sought to do as a senator is to try to encourage that kind of public, public school competition to improve uh, the outcomes for public schools. And my first bill that I ever introduced as a senator was one that further strengthened competition in our public schools. And I'm not a big voucher or advocate, but I, I like the idea of competition to strengthen our public schools. And yet, uh, Senator, I've had complaints uh, that have been lodged against the school system as being very discriminatory. Hmm. And that disturbs me a little bit. But I'll tell you what, we'll call, talk about that All in just right, a sure. few minutes. We're going to come back. You stay right where you are. Don't go away. We'll be back. Welcome back to Trudy Hayes Discovers Delaware, and we're discovering some answers from our, our guest today, Senator Tom Copper, and we were talking about uh, the school system. Mm -hmm. And I find a lot of complaints, not a lot, but considerable concerned complaints about discrimination in, in the uh, Delaware system of schools, and yet I have always uh, heard that the system is better than someplace else now. How do you bring the two together? I, I don't know how you bring the two together. What, what we try to do is to make sure that that when a kid walks into the first grade, that he or she is ready to learn. Uh, we learn so much in the first six years of our life, as I'm sure you know. In fact, I've been told that we learn as much truly in the first six years of our life as we learn in the rest of our life uh, combined. And one of the things we sought to do in this state is to try to make sure that when children are born, they're born to parents who are ready to be parents. They're ready to help prepare their kids for school. We provide parenting training for thousands of, of, of new parents. We even mm -hmm. provide parenting training in our prisons. We've got a lot of prisoners that are parents. Mm -hmm. They're gonna, most of them are going to be coming out of prison, and we want to make sure when they come out of prison that they're in a position to be a better parent than they were otherwise. We offered Delaware, was, I think, the second state in the country where we took state money to add to federal money so that every four-year-old who lives in poverty could be in a Head Start program. And uh, those are the kinds of initiatives that are so important. We provide extra, extra uh, money for our schools so that they could provide pre-K program, pre-kindergarten training for kids that are three and four years of age so that they, when they walk into first grade, they're not hopelessly behind. When you start hopelessly behind, yes, you stay you behind. You stay behind. You stay behind. And we want to make sure that didn't happen. Let's go to the second thing that you mentioned, uh, the committee that you're on. Mm -hmm. I think it was, oh, home. Homeland Security. Home, Homeland yeah. Security. 
the I know we have a war. I know that you can't sit there and do something about it. But how do you see us getting out of the situation we're in? Well, let me just say, most people don't focus on this. I'm going to answer this in a way you probably, probably wouldn't expect. I think one of the best ways to defuse terrorism uh, around the world is to, for us to focus a whole lot more in the next couple of years than we have in the last few years on ending the uh, lifelong, generations-long conflict in Israel between the Israelis, the Jews, and the Palestinians. How are you going to do that when it's all religious, really? Well, the, uh, what, what has to happen is that the, the Israelis need uh, secure borders. They need to have some, uh, some confidence that they're not going to be uh, attacked by, by terrorists themselves. Mm -hmm. And the Palestinians need to have a state a homeland of their own. So the idea is a two-state solution where you have an Israeli state alongside of a Palestinian state. And they elect their own governments. They basically run their, their own shows. But the... Uh, and we should instill that is what you're saying? Oh, we should, we should not just talk about a, a roadmap to peace. We should do our dead level best every day to put like high level envoys in, in that country to work as a go-between shuttle diplomacy with, with both of those, uh, those governments. Uh, Tony Blair, uh, Prime Minister mm -hmm. of England, he gets it. He understands that that's the, that is really the sort of like the root cause of a lot of these problems. You know, if, if, the, if the Palestinians had a homeland of their own, not at the expense of the Israelis, but they that's had true. a homeland of their own, that would take away a lot of the impetus to go out and for people to recruit terrorists and people to become terrorists and blow themselves up and kill a lot of other people. I that think. same kind of peace that you're talking about and, and camaraderie between people, how are we going to do that same thing on our own ground between uh, immigrants and alien registration, or not re alien registration, but aliens coming into, the, mm -hmm. into our country. Sure. How are we going to solve that? And I'm sure Delaware is affected because you have a lot of Latinos, don't you? We have, we have a number, probably not more than, less than some states, more than other states. Uh -huh. the, uh, the Congress has been debating for much of this year uh, immigration reform legislation, as you, as you know. And the, the approach that I think we should follow is one that is, I describe it in, th in three ways. Uh, tough, smart, comprehensive. Uh, back, uh, you don't have to go back very many months, earlier this summer, we had something like, Lord, 10,000 people were coming into this country illegally mm -hmm. every week. Now, like a half million a year, that's, that ain't a good thing. And one of the first things we need to do is to get control of our borders, to make sure that the folks that are coming in are those who really should be coming in. And there's a wide variety of ways to do that, to have uh, a fence. Some people say build a wall across the whole border of Mexico, I don't know the one on will of 2,000 yeah, mile wall, yeah. wall, but the idea of, uh, of having a, a f expanding the kind of fences they have around, high fences they have, say, in San Diego. Other things like have more border patrol, better trained border patrol, to make sure that when folks come to this country illegally and they go to work for uh, an employer mm -hmm. who knowingly hires them, we should prosecute those employers. They shouldn't get away with this Is stuff. Is any of this impacting on your state? I think to some extent that it, it, it does, but one of the things we need to do is tighten our borders and make sure that there's a whole lot fewer people coming in illegally. Second thing we need to do once that uh, we've done that is to, to figure out what do you do about the 12 million people or so that are here that are, here. That are legal immigrants. And there are some who say we should just put them in buses and planes and just truck them all or fly them all home. I don't know that that's practical. However, for, for people that others say we should just give them am amnesty, and I don't think that's a, a good answer uh, either. What, what I would suggest is that we say for the people that have been here for a number of years, they've played by the rules, they've worked hard, they've paid their taxes give them the opportunity to be on a probationary period for a number of years and to work their way towards citizenship. They got to continue to work hard, they got to continue to play by the rules, pay taxes, learn English, pay a fine. Mm, let's and if go they're to willing, that learn English. How do you feel about the uh, second language? Well, I, I think it's important and it's imperative that people learn to speak English in this country. And I think I, if you go to any other country, if you want to get along there, you got, if you're <laughs> they get, don't make concessions. Yeah, yeah. If you want to get <laughs> ahead learn here, to speak learn the language. to speak the language. And, and that, then that. you can do what you want to do. Sure, sure. And I, I like the idea of immersion rather than continuing to teach a person in their native tongue for year after year after year in our schools here. Immerse them in English right away. And then bring them up to speed in English, then teach yeah. them in English. Yeah, and then they can go home and yeah. speak whatever you want. Huh? Sure. Speak Latin if you want. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and your third one. Now, I guess one of the big things is our economy. What are you going to be able to do? Right here in, in, in Delaware, we've lost some banks. We've lost some of the uh, control over the economy here. So what are we going to be able to do? And you can tell me in just a few moments. Okay. We'll be right back. Thank you. That's a good question.
you're back and you're on okay. <laughs> about the economy. Uh, here in Delaware, you've been very fortunate. You've had a great n number of businesses, banks particularly, to support the, the state. But now that's been relaxed a little bit, and you've lost some of that. Mm -hmm. Now what? Uh, Delaware, is, I, let me just say, I think if you look at most new job creation, it comes from small businesses. Uh, we're happy that uh, Bank of America slash MBNA is here. We're delighted that AstraZeneca, large MBNA firm. MBNA is still here? Or is well, it they're part over? of Bank of America. Okay. But it's, I, we still consider them sort of one and the same. Uh, we're happy that DuPont is here. We're happy that uh, AstraZeneca is here and Chrysler and GM, that the, they're here. But if you look at uh, job creation, job growth, it really comes out of small businesses. And one of the keys for success in economic development and job creation is providing a nurturing environment for uh, small business growth and, and job creation. That, that you do that in a variety of ways. One, uh, good workforce, good schools. Uh, two, reasonable regulations. Three, access to capital. One of the biggest impediments to companies, little companies growing is having access to capital. Uh, small loans, small grants. But working on that kind of thing, you need good uh, infrastructure, good transportation systems. You need just access to your key decision makers, you know, legislators and governors who listen so uh, how do you, to folks. So how do you picture in that and making it better for Delaware? Uh, one, uh, I'll, I'll just get in, I was over the, today at the General Motors plant. I was this morning at the Chrysler plant. We have, uh, we build all the Dodge Durangos. We're about to start building all the Chrysler Aspens in our Newark uh, assembly plant. And that means how many jobs? Oh, a couple thousand. Mm -hmm. There's uh, probably a couple more thousand uh, GM jobs that are right there at the plant where they build all the, all the uh, Pontiac Solstices and all the Saturn Skies. We're about to uh, build uh, some of these Saturn Skies, which are a beautiful sports car. We're going to put an Opal nameplate, export them, send them to Europe. Imagine that, building cars in Delaware for export yes. to other, other countries. So, so I assume that's... that your position on outsourcing is reverse. Bring it in. Well, we, 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 it's important in this country. Some people think we can stop manufacturing stuff, just become a service economy. I don't buy that. We need to make things that people yeah, in other to. countries want to buy. We used to. Sure. And uh, I, uh, we, uh, we need to, to provide, build cars that get good gas mileage, that are low emission. And uh, that's, that's the kind of thing that How we try to How are you going to talk through. that into the <coughs> gas get, companies? Uh, I, I mean, we know that there are cars uh, already. In the, in the waiting room that can uh, save gas, that we don't, that they can run on other things, yeah. other alternative uh, admissions. So what, what can so you there, do? There are three, three things that I can do and, and have sought to do uh, in my role in, in the Senate. One is to provide federal money for research, basic research and development into how do we build good hybrid powered vehicles, how do we build uh, 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 reliable uh, fuel cell powered mm -hmm. vehicles? How do we build uh, solar powered vehicles? But for the federal government to provide research and development funds. Second, once we've done that, and companies are trying to build uh, more energy efficient cars, for us to use the federal government's purchasing power on the civilian side and on the defense side, to use the government's purchasing power to commercialize those technologies, to actually buy some of these vehicles, and third, to use the government's taxing abilities to provide tax credits to encourage people to buy hybrids, energy efficient hybrids, to encourage people to buy energy efficient diesel, low emission, clean right. burning diesel powered vehicles. So those are the kinds of things that we're doing. Well, then you also have to uh, affect the advertising that we do in this country because everybody thinks that you can only run on a big car, an SVU, is that what they're called? Yeah, SUV. Uh, SUVs. Yeah, that's changing. I mean, that's changing. And uh, folks are are now looking for more energy efficient vehicles and, and it's incumbent on us, whether it happened to be Daimler, Chrysler, or you have to be Ford or, or GM, uh, or some of the other companies that build cars here, to, to build a variety of cars. And I'll tell you, the GM plant here, the Chrysler plant here, we need to do what Toyota does. They build three or four different kinds of cars mm -hmm. in one plant. If car A is hot, they build more of those. If car B is hot, or you know, minivan C is hot, or sports car D is hot, they build more of those. And we need to have flexible manufacturing as well. That's so the smart way to build. So you have to reopen these plants like Ford and Chrysler and GM? Uh, actually, we just need to build new ones. Well, what we have to continue to do is modernize the plants that we have. And uh, I, I'm an old naval flight officer and flew an airplane that we were talking about earlier. We hunted for Red October. Our job was to track Soviet nuclear submarines in all the oceans of the world. The planes that I flew in were pretty old. But we kept changing the insides of the planes, modernizing the technology, mm -hmm. making us more effective in the work that we did. The same is true with the, with the uh, auto plants. Continue to upgrade and modernize the plants, train the employees, train the workers, and get people to work together. And go back to the schools and give courses in those things. 
so that people can come out not necessarily being a lawyer in Indian, an mm -hmm. Indian chief, but they can work with their hands, that they can be creative, that they can have ideas. And have a good work ethic. Yeah. I would be reliable, dependable, come to work, provide a day's work for a day's pay. That's what we need, and that's what businesses are looking for. In the states that can provide that kind of workforce, that's where businesses will grow and prosper. When you go back to your desk in January, what's the first thing that you're going to do? I think I'll say, thank you, God, for letting me get reelected. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start, we'll start with prayer and say, thank you, Lord. Uh, I, uh, I think my job in the Senate is to, to try to get people to work together. I, I, I've tried to take from Delaware to Washington ideas, things that have worked here, to better educate our kids, to help create jobs, to provide better health care for people, to get, help people those get off the of work. Those are all things we want. Those are, how are you going to implement all that? Uh, well, What's the first thing on your desk at the bill that you want well, to introduce? I'll just give you one example. We have people, thousands of people in this state who suffer from asthma, uh, from pollution in our air. We have uh, folks, who, women who eat fish that are, have mercury in those fish. They give birth to uh, brain deformed babies. Uh, we have too much carbon dioxide going into the air. It's warming our, our climate. So one of my major priorities is going to be uh, to pass legislation that will reduce uh, the kind of pollution in the air that causes asthma, that causes smog pollution, that causes brain damage to infants that uh, contributes to global warming. That's one of my big ones. All right, now when you think about it, and you're very adamant about that, seemingly, and you're very interested in it, when you put that bill on the floor, mm -hmm. do you ha already have support for it? Oh, sure. In fact, uh, we have bipartisan support, Democrats and Republicans. Uh, a, a companion bill, similar bill, has been introduced in the House with Democrat and Republican mm -hmm. support. We have some environmental support from environmental groups. We even have some, well, of, the, you got those. some <laughs> of the utility companies even support mm -hmm. what we're trying to do as, as well. And, and uh, so that's the kind of thing that, that, that I'll be working on. And all these things, all these changes, of course, is going to take funding or, or maybe not so much extra funding, but reversing the funding. Where we put our money is important, I think, in this country and in the future. What we do with the money, because we have it. And it seems like it's going in wrong directions. Well, we, we spend as a country a whole lot more money than we take in. We have huge budget deficits. We're spending beyond our means. We have this enormous trade deficit. As you, you may know, we, we, have, uh, we probably buy from the rest of the world in a year three quarters of a trillion dollars more from the rest of the world than they buy from us. So then that's what I'm saying. We have to bring that back we home. We have to we? make things in this country that people in other countries that's want to buy. That's what we have to do. Well, I'm going to hold you to that okay. because I'm going to have you back and I'm going to see what happened to that particular bill, if Great. you don't mind. Um, and anytime you need us. We're right here. Good. Thank you so much. We want to thank you for being our guest today, and we want to thank you for listening. This is Trudy Haynes for Trudy Haynes Discovers Delaware.